Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you can join us again today for the third of our four trainings on the mobile data collection platform, ComCare. Again, my name is Meg Gibbon. I'm the program manager for the Meta Project, and our facilitators remain the ComCare specialists, Alexandra morgan Kisarale and Jeremy Waxman, both of the software company Dimagi. Uh, I hope that all attendees were able to join us on our previous trainings or watch the recordings. If you haven't done so, please feel free to follow along with our presenters, but note that to be able to create your own mobile app, we would strongly recommend viewing our two previous trainings as well to get up to speed. And as in previous trainings, all attendees are currently muted. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to type them in the chat throughout the training, and then we'll address those during Q&A. And so now I guess I'll hand it over to Alex to get started. As Meg mentioned, um, this is session three. Welcome. Um, today we're going to focus on refining your application for case management. Just to recap session two, where we focused on basic data collection, during session two we examined a case study about Ashley, who is a community health promoter, and Sarah, one of her clients. And then based on this case study, we reviewed application design practices to guide the app building process and then got familiar with Comcare HQ. And after we did that, while we were in Comcare HQ, we um, used the form builder to start building a client intake form based on the paper tool that Ashley is currently using, as well as the expected interactions between Ashley and Sarah. And then at the end, we used the preview form feature to look at our questions and simulate filling out the digital form that we created. And so if you were able to participate in session two or do some of the independent practice uh, after session two, you should have a good feel for basic form building, um, specifically adding questions to compose a form. And so today, we want to introduce case management. And so case management can mean many things to um, many different audiences, and, and we'll talk about what case management means in, in ComCare, but we want to start this session by completing that client intake form as well as uh, an evaluation form. And so we've pre-built those forms ahead of time. Uh, some of you have that first form, but we've also built the evaluation form, and, and that will be able to focus our attention on, uh, instead of adding questions, making these forms smarter to better support Ashley's workflow and improve data quality. And we want to do this by showing you how to add display conditions, so uh, telling Comcare when a question should display, adding validation conditions, determining when an answer is valid. Uh, we also want to show you how to use hidden values to perform calculations as well as labels to display information. And so after we do that, after we add those things to our forms, we'll show you how to link these forms together so that data that's been collected um, in the client intake form is accessible in the evaluation form. And the information from both forms can be saved to Sarah's file. So this is this is what we call case management, and we want to show that to you today. And we'll also install the application on a phone so that you can actually see what that looks like on a device versus in the mobile platform. And so let's actually move into Comcare HQ. All right, so if you have already started application building, feel free to follow along. Um, if you've not, that's okay. Um, you'll still be able to follow along with this particular training. This is, as you remember, the dashboard. And so from here, I'm going to click on session three. Some of you may have a different name for your application. Perhaps it's called CHP application. I'm going to click here where my application lives. All right. So now we're in the application builder. And you can see along the side that I have the client intake form from last time, but I also have this evaluation form, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's start here with the client intake form. And we'll click on this little pencil to open up the form. So you should have something 
that looks like this in your question tree with all of the questions that were available in that form, that paper form. And then if you had an opportunity, you may have been able to add a few of the questions at the end of that form related to um, medication. And so I've added those here um, as well as medical history questions. And so now that we have all of our questions in our form builder, we want to actually start adding in some complexity. So there's certain questions in here that should probably have some validation. We want to make sure that only certain answers are valid. And so date of birth is that sort of question. We want to make sure that the date of birth that's entered is only a date in the past and not a date in the future. And so that's a validation condition. And what we would do is click here. And you'll see um, where we can build the expression that tells Compure exactly what is valid and what is not. And this is the simple version of this. There's also an advanced mode. And so for this one, we are going to drag this question in. And when we put a validation condition on a question, you'll see this dot. As a best practice, whenever we're creating expressions, as much as possible, we should try to drag and drop. Um, and that avoids typing errors that can occur really often. And so we want to say that this date, whatever date is entered, is less than or equal to today. And then we want to save that. And so here's what that expression looks like. Again, the date that's entered is less than or equal to today. It can only be a date that's today or in the past. And then we want to put a message here, something like the date of birth cannot be in the future. So that if a future date is entered, the mobile worker will actually see this message. And so we can save that. And for our other date question, date of arrival to the US, you'll see that I've used the same validation condition with a different message, that the date of arrival cannot be in the future. It can only be in the past. So then another example is the phone number. So usually phone numbers are only a certain number of digits. And so to ensure that we get the right number of digits, we often want to constrain this using, again, a validation condition. And so I'll show you one for phone number. We're going to drag phone number in. And then in the United States, let's just assume that we're in the US context for everything, We'll say that the phone number needs to have 10 digits. So if we leave it like this, you know, if we, if we construct it similarly to how we did the date of birth, what this says is the phone number is equal to 10. But that's not exactly what we want. We want the number of digits to be equal to 10. And so the way that we do that is to add string length and then put that dot in parentheses and say it's equal to 10. So this now tells Comcare that we should have 10 digits entered for the phone number. We press save and then you can add a message, something like that. And then we can save it. And we have the same thing here for the secondary phone number. So those are examples of validation conditions. Now I'm going to show you an example of display conditions. So display conditions are useful for um, determining when a question should be displayed or should not be displayed. It should be hidden. And oftentimes we want to display or hide questions or skip questions. Often this is, this is called skip logic um, based on answers to previous questions. And so that's what we're going to do here. There's this question, single mother, yes or no. And so there's a couple of circumstances in which we want to ask this question. 
we only want to ask the question to women, right, because women are mothers. And then we only want to ask the question to women who have children. And so fortunately, we actually ask the sex and we ask for the number of children. And so we're going to put in display condition for a single mother using those two questions. So if you click here, you get back to the expression builder. And we're going to, oh, let me back up. The question you select will always have a box around it. And so I just noticed that I, I was not selecting the right question. And so that's why I exited. Now I am selecting single mother and I can put a display condition on that. So I'm going to say sex and take them to female. And then we're going to add another expression that children. greater than zero, okay? So here you see result is true when all of the expressions are true. So we need them both to be true in order for this single mother question to display. So we're gonna save that, and this is what that expression looks like here. So similarly for pregnant women, you'll see that it will only display for clients who are female. I'll show just quickly another one. Are you employed? Where are you employed? And what is your work schedule? These are all related questions. So we want to display where are you employed and what is your train and what is your work schedule? Only if the person says they're actually employed. We also have one here where the date only shows if later date was selected. Okay, so the validation conditions, display conditions. I also want to show you how to use hidden values in your form to perform calculations. So in the original paper form, there was a question for age. So we were collecting both the date of birth and the age. So we can actually calculate age based on the date of birth. And we can do that using a hidden value. If we Look here, I actually want age to show up right there. And so we're going to calculate this based on the date of birth. So I'm going to break down what this expression actually looks like. So we'll do today minus the date of birth. And then because we actually want this in years, we're going to divide that. So this would, this by itself would give us some long number, right, in terms of days. So we want to divide that by 365.25 so that we can get the year for this person. And then, because we want this to be a whole number, we're going to cast it in this function called integer integer ensures that whatever, however this is calculated, if it's a decimal, if it turns out to be a whole number, what output is a whole number. And that's generally how we understand age. Now this might look complicated to you. Fortunately, this is a common calculation. And if ever you need help or you're curious about how you might want to calculate something, we have a link to our, our help site. So I'll actually show you this page where we have a list of calculations with dates and times. And so these are the most common ones. And you'll see that this is the one that I use, age and years. Today, minus date of birth divided by 365.25. So no need to memorize. But now we have a calculation for age. So we'll save that. So 10 values are something that you can use within the form to perform calculations, they're often hidden. But we like to see the output of that from time to time. And in this case, we want to show the mobile worker, we want to show Ashley um, the age. And so the way that we do that is to add a label. 
and we can call this age label. And we can say this person is, we can drag age right here, years old. And then press save. That is all we're going to do for this form. Just to make sure our calculation is working properly. Let's go to the preview form that we went to last time right here. The way you get to that, if you're, if you're in the process of building a form and you want to preview it within CompTRIHQ, simply click on the name of the form and then this page will show up and you can click preview form. Let's say Alexandra, and then we get this for a date widget. We'll make up a date. And you'll see that our app calculates that this person is 16 years old. And so then we have that age question captured automatically by Comcare. And so here you see the rest of the questions. And if you wanted to, you can test um, these questions as well. One example might be, you should put in female. I noticed that our pregnancy question just popped up. You should put in one. Let's see if our single mother question pops up. So notice that that will only appear for the mobile worker to answer if this information, these two questions, are met first. So that's the client intake form. I want to navigate back to our application. I'm going to leave this. Now I want to look at this evaluation form. So for the purposes of this session, um, we created a very short 10-question evaluation form. Certainly, um, in real programs, evaluations are often much longer. But we just want to show you a few things that can be done with a form like this. So in our previous form, a lot of our questions um, were yes and no, and um, our choice values and our labels married each other. If the answer was yes, the choice value was also yes. For this evaluation, we want to generate a score based on the answers to each of the questions. And so the way that we can do that is by providing an, a numeric value for each of these answers. Instead of a word, we put a number. So here, yes equals one and no equals zero. And we have that all the way through for each of these. And what this allows us to do is actually add up each question and calculate a score. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Here is a hidden value. Again, you want to use a hidden value to perform calculations. So here's a hidden value for the score. You'll see that I've already placed some of the questions in my expression. And so I'm just going to add to this. Complete medication is this question. We're going to skip this question. We decided that for this question, um, we won't put any value to these. This is just informational. We won't, we won't allow that question to factor into the scoring. But to add this question, we just put a plus, and then we drag the question into the box. And that's it. We save it. We save again. And here again, we want to actually output the score. So we'll add a label. We put score label. And in this particular evaluation, we have 10 possible points. So we'll put score is, drag that hidden value right there out of 10 points. Again, we can use this preview form feature to test out whether or not our calculation is working properly. So randomly put in questions. You'll see here that another question popped up. So met with the specialist, which specialist did you visit? We only want to know that if the answer is yes.
And once we finish, you see that the score is 7 out of 10 points. So we see that all of our calculations are working as we like. I think this is a great point to actually show you how to put this onto a phone and see what it looks like on the device versus the web platform. So to do that, we're going to go back here. And right here, we're going to click Deploy. So what we're actually doing is making a version of the application that can be installed onto a mobile device. So what you want to do is click New Version. And then you have the option to add a comment. And a lot of times adding comments is really useful if you're um, creating multiple versions as you're building or if you are building alongside someone else. Um, it's helpful um, in communicating with them what's been added, what's been taken out, et cetera. Usually as people build applications, they'll have multiple versions that they're building. And so then we want to release it. So it's possible to build an application and not release it out to everyone who may have this application on the phone. We won't go into that in this session, but for, for now, just know that we want to click release so that the latest version of the application installs onto our device. Now let's click deploy. We have two options, online install as well as offline install. We're going to do an online install since we have good connection and it's pretty straightforward. So online install, we can scan an application barcode or we can enter an app code. And so for ease, I'm actually going to enter this barcode. So this is what I'm seeing on my phone right now. I'll click scan barcode. And I have a barcode scanner on my device. It scans that QR code, and then I press Start Install. Now I'm able to log in. And you may remember from our last session that you actually need a mobile worker account in order to log in to a Comcare application on a mobile device. So that's my mobile worker demo. Okay, so from here I can press start. And you'll see that my two modules are showing up, my client intake module as well as my evaluation module. So I'm going to click on my client intake module and click on the form. And now I'm able to see the questions that I built in Comcare. And I'll quickly just populate it with a bit of information. So you notice if I try to put it in the future, this validation message pops up. And it won't let me proceed without fixing this error. So I'm going to fix the error and then continue on. So here again, we have an opportunity to see if our validation conditions are working, and they are. Let's skip that question. Uh, zero children. So notice that that single mother question has been skipped, but the pregnant question has shown up because I'm a woman. So we're going to say no. Well completed. Literacy in primary language. Yes. Are you employed? If I say yes, I'll get employment questions. If I say no, it skips over those questions. So just quickly answer some of these questions.
And there's a number of questions related to medical history. And in the interest of time, we move through those pretty swiftly so I can show you just the evaluation form. So then we click finish and the form will be submitted to CompCareHQ. And we're gonna hit start again, go to evaluation. And now we're in the evaluation form. And so here's the message just for the mobile worker, just for Ashley. This is a 10 question survey about the US healthcare system. Ask the client to answer each question. And so then all of the questions will be presented. Now, you may have noticed something different. And I didn't show it to you in the tree. I can, the, the question list within the form builder, I can. But you'll notice that in this particular form, we have multiple questions put together. So the way that we did that was by using the question list question type. And you can see that it allows the mobile worker to see multiple questions. And that's usually an easier sort of interaction for them than swiping for each question, swiping, 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 to see one question per screen. So it's a little neater. And again, in the interest of time, we'll kind of move through these questions. You'll see that it's pretty easy to select the option and then continue forward. And you'll notice that based on the answer that I provided, the score is 3.5 points out of 10 possible points. So then I can submit that. And those are the two forms we've built so far. You'll notice that they are completely disconnected from each other. Even though this evaluation form is specifically being filled out for, in this case, Alex. And so in the next half of the, the training, we're actually going to show you how we connect these two forms so that the information that was collected in that client intake form is accessible or usable in the evaluation form. Before we do that, I want to pause and see if we have any questions. Thanks so much, Alex. I haven't seen any questions come through in the chat so far, so if anyone does have a question, uh, please go ahead and type that in now. I'll ask one that I had. I know that in our first training, you gave some examples of the kind of messages that you can use to prompt the mobile worker. So for example, you talked about the client indicates they have a medical condition that is urgent, they may have the mobile worker be prompted to make a referral. And I was just wondering if you could speak to any other examples. This to me seems like one of the advantages of a mobile app over a paper form. Absolutely. Um, and, and Jeremy, also feel free to chime in. I know that in addition to sort of um, the example you gave, uh, prompting a mobile worker to provide a referral, um, a lot of times messages are used for counseling. If a, if a client, for instance, has answered that they um, have a history of diabetes, then perhaps either a series of questions appear um, as a result. So that's of using those display conditions where the mobile worker can, can ask some more detailed questions about their uh, diabetes at present. We could also use that same answer to the question around diabetes to prompt the mobile worker to provide counseling to that client. And so perhaps the client is, is not sure how to manage their diabetes and, and what that message might say is counsel the, the client on um, diabetes management. Here are some things that they should do. And then we can list those out for the mobile worker. Um, and, and what's great about that, especially for workers who have a number of protocols and a number of different ways in which they interact with their clients, they don't always remember everything related to uh, the, the various conditions, health conditions, or the resources that might be available. And so the mobile application is able to support that process, both counseling and decision support in terms of what's next. I don't know, Jeremy, do you have um, thoughts on other ways in which they've been used? I know we have, we have many, many examples. Yeah, I, I think uh, that those are great examples. One thing I'll add is that if you have a, a wide variety of people who are using a, um, 
a particular tool or, or like an intake form or something, maybe you want to add just clarifying questions on how to ask or clarifying information on how to ask a particular question. So you could have um, maybe we'll show in the next session you could add like a little help bubble. You could click on that provides some additional information if if the user might need some okay. extra guidance. Or you can use logic um, to also, you know, if, if you have some combination of answers that are a, a flag, which could be a referral or it could be just, you know, asking the worker to confirm that they indeed meant to enter what they did. So that's a, a, another way, I think, to provide some uh, more real-time feedback, which is some flexibility you have over using a, a static paper system. Yeah, absolutely. And it's actually interesting as well to think about some other applications outside of health. I know in this particular case study, we focused on health. But I can think of similar ways this could be used for cultural orientation or employment services or, you know, any number of programs uh, serving refugees in the U.S. And then I also wanted to just as a reminder to any attendees who may have not joined the first training, this use case is focusing on a community health promoter who is interfacing with clients but might not be their primary caseworker. But it's also something that a caseworker could use themselves and be prompted to follow certain office protocols or um, certain regulations to, you know, get the client through the RMP period at a certain time, something like that. So there's uh, there's all kinds of uses for this this type of feature. We saw another quick question come through the chat, um, a question about the validation conditions. Is there a way to ensure that a phone number is actually formatted specifically? So not just limiting by digits, but adding in dashes or um, an area code? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I'm going to drop a link in the chat, actually, that points to a page on the help site that outlines um, outlines some different types of formatting validation you can use. So the, the quick answer is yes. Uh, and ComCare relies on a general programming thing called regular expressions, which I don't have to get into too much, but just to say that there's a lot of flexibility you have if you're putting, if you have to put a little effort sometimes to figure out exactly what the right syntax is in order to specify a particular, a particular format. But this is, uh, uses the same basic principles if you fill out a form on it, like a banking website or any other website and you've ever noticed it says this is not a valid email address because you didn't put the at sign or it looks for other formatting things like that. So you can use those same types of rules uh, for any field in healthcare. Great, thanks. So I think with that, maybe we'll move on to the second half of the presentation and then take uh, final questions towards the end. All right, great. So I'm going to pick up where Alex stopped and talk a little bit about the case management that she mentioned at the beginning. And so what you saw so far is that we built an application, and our application had two forms that were both related to the um, to the same person. So there's a client intake form, and then as a follow-up to that, there's an evaluation form. And uh, when you saw on the app, you enter each of those separately, so the data between those is not linked. So what we'll do in this next few steps here is introduce case management to our application so that any follow-up form uh, is linked in workflow and by data to the registration that occurred. That may sound a little abstract right now, but I think uh, once you see, see the process, it'll make a bit more sense. So first, I'm going to go back to the client intake form. And you may have noticed uh, that previously Alex was coming to the screen to do the preview form function and spent most of our time, we were inside the form, actually editing the content of the form. But now I want to stay on this settings page and go to this tab that uh, says case management. So right now, because I, this form, we just added it and we just populated it with questions. It doesn't really have anything to do with case management right now. There's just a, a little message here about cases and it says this form does not use cases. And if you're just doing a one-time form, then that's a great, great solution. It's not really necessary to employ case management. But if you do want to link data over time, then what we might want to do with this is we want to say every time this form is filled out, we want to register a new case in our database of cases. And so what you can imagine now, after I click this, is now when this form is filled out, it's like it's adding a new row to my list of clients that I'm following up with over time. Uh, so I'm just going to save it now that I've chosen registers a new case. Not going to let me do that because I need to specify a name for the for this case for the client that I'm going to be following up with. So when I click here where it says select a question, I have an option to see all the different questions that have been added to the form. You can see if I scroll up and down, and because we just need to use a name, I'm just going to go ahead and click on client name, and now that's uh, like a special property 
So when I'm ever I'm doing a record about this particular case on Comcare HQ, it's going to be labeled by this name. One minor point I just want to make here is that names, of course, are not unique. You the same community health promoter in our in our case. There might be two Sarahs that are under the guidance of the same health promoter. So Comcare on the background is creating a, a unique identifier. It's like a long alphanumeric code. So each one is in fact a unique record, even if the, the name, the visible name is the same. Just want to make that point. Uh, so for every uh, new case record I create, I can choose to update that record with certain case properties. And I'm going to come back to this a little bit more. It'll make more sense. But what I want to do right now is I want to take a couple of pieces of information that are in this form that I know I'm going to want to look at later, or I might want to reference in a subsequent form. So let me save the sex here and maybe date of birth. I'm going to pick a couple of other things here, name of caseworker, the address. Let's take the primary phone number. Oops. And maybe pregnant. Great. So what you see here now is a bunch of questions that are in this form, and then we see how they're going to be stored in that database uh, over here on the right. So for every row kind of in my database, every new client, I'm going to have a column for, for a name, for sex, for date of birth, for caseworker, and those question IDs that, um, that Alex showed you inside of the form builder are put here by default as the case property name. So you can modify these, but for uh, simplicity, I'm just going to leave those right now like that. And I'm going to go ahead and save. And feel free to interrupt if there's any questions, because this part does get a little confusing. Uh, but I want to try to make sure we get to at least see what it looks like. So what I've done so far is made my client intake form register a new case. Uh, so the next step I'm going to do is go and click on the module that's for client intake. So I was just updating the form, and now I'm going to sort of the folder of overall um, of, of the forms right here to do uh, one or two more little adjustments before we get this all set up. So I'm going to go to this tab, case management, as I go through this app and set up case management. And I have to specify a case type. So case type doesn't, doesn't matter too much exactly what you call it, but you want to give it a name that is going to be e easily distinguishable. So if you had a CHP and they were following up clients and they were also visiting facilities or something to do some kind of a, a check-in, then those might be two different case types in the same application. In our example, we're all everything's going to be related to the client. So I'm just going to enter the case type here as client. And you can think of this as being the name of the database that I download. So I'm going to download the client database. And I'm going to see one row for every person, for every client that was registered in the client intake form. So that's the, the first half of my setup. And now what I want to do is go to my evaluation form. And if you remember when Alex was showing the demonstration on the phone, the evaluation form, you could just directly go click to, to that form, just like you could go into the client intake form uh, and fill that out. But what I want to do is I want to make it so that before you fill out the evaluation form, you have to choose one of the clients that was previously registered so that the data is linked together. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm, again, going to go to the form settings section by clicking on the form evaluation. And I'm going to go to the case management tab here. Okay, just like the uh, client intake form, when I come to this, it initially says does not use cases, it's just like a one-time survey thing. But now I want to say not that it registers a new case, but that this form updates or closes a case. So I'm going to click on that and save. Okay, and then again, this looks just like you saw the first time. There's um, the opportunity to save information from the um, from the form to that case record. So maybe I'll just go ahead and save that score. Maybe we want to keep track of that score over time, and maybe we want to keep track of let's see of uh, current physical health. And so now those are two more columns that I'm going to add to that uh, database or that like spreadsheet of clients over time. And I'm going to save that. And then because both this evaluation module and this client intake module are both about clients, I'm just going to set the same case type for this module. So I'm clicking on evaluation, the case type, right, on the module level, going to the case management tab, 
case type, I'm going to type in client so that it's exactly the same that I used in the other module. Now, uh, there's a couple other tabs here, which are going to become relevant in a second, the case list and the case detail. So now when I come to this evaluation form, I'm going to have to select a case before I can fill it out. And so the case list determines what information I'm going to see before I select that, like when I'm looking at all the different possible cases. So by default, it's added name, so that's great because I know name exists, we saw it in the client intake. Maybe I'll add one other property. So let's see, we had a couple other uh, options here. Oops. I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to come to the case list here and add a property. And now I have the option of choosing all these different case properties, these pieces of client information that I added. So let's add maybe the date of birth. And I'm going to call this date of birth. And I'm going to set it as a date. And you'll get to see in just a second what this looks like. I'll save that. And then I'm going to go to case details. And we can add in some of these additional fields. Add in the primary phone number as a phone number. And let's add the address as an address. Uh, maybe physical health. And let's add the sex here. OK, so I just did a lot of stuff. And now let's see what it looks like on the phone. And then I think that will help make it clear what all of these changes just did. So you saw Alex install the app uh, after coming to this deploy screen. What I'm going to show you now is how you update an app. So you don't have to install it each time. You can just make incremental changes and deploy those changes to the phone. So here's that demo version that Alex made. I'm going to click on Make New Version. And I'm just going to remind myself by adding a comment. So this was that I added case management in case um, Alex comes back to this later and wonders what this, this version is for. And I'm going to now release this version because I want to be able to update to it from the phone. So I'm going to click this star here. And then I'm going to move over to my phone. OK, so I'm going to log in again as demo. And so I have the same version of the application that, that Alex had on her phone. So that's this. Uh, it's probably too small to see, but she had a version 63. And now I'm on version 72, so I want to update. So what I'm going to do. After I've logged in, is I'm going to go to Update App, and it's going to check. So it was on 63, and it found there was a newer version, and it's updated to that. So I'm going to go ahead and complete that update. And then I can log in again to the new version. All right, I'm going to go to Start again. The Client Intake form is up here at the top, and the Evaluation form at the bottom. you notice if I click on Evaluation, I can see that there's a list, but there's nothing in it. So there's name and there's date of birth, those two fields I added in the case list, but nothing there yet. So I need to register someone first. So I'm going to go to client intake and let's register Alexandra. And I have to follow all the rules here from the validation. Do that. Birth date, 29 years old, female, date of arrival to the US. Caseworker. Sorry to interrupt, Jeremy. It looks like there might be a little lag. Let me just refresh that. Just going to enter an address. And I'll have to enter a phone number here. Do. And skip through most of these. Okay. Yeah. Showing up okay now? Yes. Okay, so I'm just skipping through. You can see because these are required questions, you get the side this response is required. So we're going to fill those in. And we get to the end of the form. I'm going to go ahead and submit that. So that's going off to the Concurse 2 server. And I can go now to start. And I could register someone else, but let's say I want to do a follow up and visit the client. So I click on evaluation. And now that person is populated on my, on my phone here. And you can imagine if this list gets long, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do to optimize how that list is organized. But for now, let me click on, on Alexander, and I can see some additional details about her based on those properties that I added to the case register and how I configured that case list and case detail views. So there's a, a phone number. I can click here and call the phone. I can view that address on a map. 
and I can see whatever basic information it seems like it's important for the, the user, the CHP, to be able to see. If I can confirm that that's heard, then I want to follow up, and I can go into the evaluation here and go ahead and fill out this form again. And now, uh, unlike the time that you saw Alex filling it out, this data will now be associated with um, Alex, the, the case that I just registered. So there's that score, 5.5 out of 10 points. And if I go back in now and I look at those details, I can see now this, these details are updated, physical health that was filled out in the uh, evaluation form. So over time, you can imagine if you have lots of different forms you're filling out, you're able to kind of build out that record and update that record over time. I'll have to pause for a second to see if there's any questions. Sure, so if anyone has any questions again, please feel free to type them out. Here's one. Is it possible to see the data from various versions, perhaps previous evaluations? Exactly, that's what I was thinking, to do a survey on different dates. So actually, Jeremy, I think they mentioned that Comcare records some information as well based on what's entered, even without having to put it in. So am I right in saying that Comcare will capture when, for example, an evaluation was done, and then is it possible to see data from different times we did that evaluation yeah. for the same client? Yep, that's a great question. So say that you had this uh, this evaluation form and that you had a schedule, like you fill it out every month or something. Uh, so you would be able to see those records in the like one form per each uh, time the evaluation was completed. So if you downloaded that evaluation form, you would see uh, maybe uh, you know four rows that were associated with one person if you wanted to see that that level of granularity uh, as far as the the follow up over time. Uh, and then as far as the data that's captured passively, there is data, there's like some core metadata that's always captured when you fill out a form. So uh, an example that I think Alex had touched on on one of the prior uh, sessions was at the top of this form, the paper form, it asks for the name of the CHP and for the date that it's being completed. But you'll notice those questions are not included in the client intake form. And the reason not included is because that data is, is just captured automatically. The, the login ID, if whoever is completing the form, that's that's the person who filled it out, and so you have that information. And the uh, um, the date that the form is filled out is also captured uh, in the metadata. The the general answer is that yes, that each of these, like you can fill out the form multiple times, and you could specify maybe you, like how frequently you want it to be filled out. You can do some interesting logic to kind of guide the CHP. You know, maybe uh, you have that list of of 20 clients. Maybe you sort them by whoever has been visited most recently, maybe drops to the bottom, and so you have that kind of a prioritization over time, or you could display the date that the evaluation was last completed uh, or the time that has elapsed since the evaluation was last completed as a way to kind of guide uh, when you need to fill it out again. Great. Thanks. Do we want to wrap up for the moment and then uh, answer any final questions at the very end? Yeah, that sounds great. So for the wrap up for this session, what we're going to do is we'll take the, the second form that you saw, the evaluation form, and we'll post the spreadsheet that specifies the structure of it onto the Demogi Academy site. If you all want to follow along and try to set up uh, an application with the basic case management that we demonstrated today. Uh, additionally, if you have any questions, we would love to hear those questions in order to inform what to cover in the last session. So we have a lot of things that we could cover um, as far as building on some of this complexity or uh, looking at the data a little bit, uh, but feel free to share those questions with us. I wanted to point out on, if you go to the Moggy Academy course that I've just gone right here to the, the meta training series, uh, if you go to this discussion tab, you can post questions here. There is someone posted a question earlier today about copying and pasting questions. Um, I'll post your response to that, but feel free to post any thoughts you have there. And then on this courseware tab, you go over there, you can see a section for each of the sessions. And so if you want to see the, the tools for the independent practice, you can go to uh, the independent practice uh, part of session two, and you can click on those resources here to get those. And then uh, we'll be posting the additional resources uh, within the next day here under session three. So great if uh, you have some time before session four to, to try that out to help guide what we're talking about. And that final session will be a week from today uh, at 3 p.m. 
where we'll talk a little bit more about publishing and finishing up the application and adding some additional complexity. Just to uh, reiterate these channels, these are also posted in the Demagi Academy site as far as the email address to reach us, the discussion forum, uh, and the other support channels that you have to get more information about, about Calm Care. Anything else on your end, Meg? No, just to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, this is such an interesting session to really begin to see how we can continue to build out these apps. I think Jeremy, Alex, and I will stay and answer. I see one last question here, or anyone else who has any questions, we'll stay for another minute or two. But for those who need to leave at the end of the hour, thanks again for joining us. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to email meta at rescue.org. Thanks, everyone. So actually, to follow up on the question about evaluations and where we can begin to start tracking that data, evaluating clients over time being something that I think a lot of us are really interested in, can you see the results of different iterations of an evaluation on the app itself, or would those have to be accessed in reporting? Yeah, that's a good question. So it's definitely more robust to do that over reporting, sorry, over to do it on the um, ComCare HQ. You can, on the mobile, uh, you can see a record of forms that are submitted. If I go to this main page here uh, and I go to Save Forms, I can see for Alexandra here's uh, the client intake form and the evaluation form, and I can review those. And you can design the form to track certain pieces of data over time. So if you wanted to see, for example, what, what the response was for something, at the prior visit, then you can structure the case management to do that. But if you're looking at uh, tracking a particular variable over many, many visits, then it's going to be more feasible to do that looking at the data once you've downloaded it. Great. That makes sense. And I was actually curious myself, you mentioned you know, some of the other functionality that we can add on. I'm sure we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next session. But when it comes to things like if we were interested in evaluation, for example, where can we go to learn more about that? I know. Demaji Academy has a lot of information. Is there somewhere we can go to kind of read more about some of the other functionality of case management? Yeah, we can point you to a couple links that highlight some workflows that you can use with case management. I think a couple of the features that you saw today have much more complexity in them. So, for example, that case list and case details uh, have some pretty complex things you can do with them just to give you a sense like you could only show in the case list like you could have a special form that's only for following up with pregnant women. You could filter that list to only show pregnant women for that particular form so you have some matching of, of clients to what the follow-up is. And it's something that I think we'll touch on next time is you can use uh, those case properties to guide questions that you ask later. So like Alex had shown, you could put a display condition on a prior question, only show uh, the pregnancy question you know, if they were identified as female in the earlier part of the survey. But you can also refer back to a case property. So in the evaluation, we could have a question that we only want to ask if the person is under 18. So we can go back to that earlier information that's stored in, in the case and reference that as a display condition or uh, in other complex ways. So we'll, we'll touch on a couple of those, and then we can point you to some guidance on, on the use of those. Great. So when we put this recording up, we'll be sure to include some extra links for those uh, interested in learning more about those features. Yeah. All right. So I think that was all the questions that we received. Um, thanks again, Jeremy and Alex, for facilitating this training and looking forward to the final one in this series on the 22nd. Great. Thanks, everyone.